loves, welcome to day three of your self-love immersion. My name is Carrie Tuminia. If you are new to my work, I am a love and relationship expert and an energy worker. And I am putting together this five-day self-love immersion to help you love your authentic self. Uh, we've already covered, if you haven't caught up, the links to the previous videos are in the comments. Please do check them out. Um, and today I wanted to chat with you about where we learn self-love in the first place. Because again, so many people come to me and so many women that I work with and so many women and men that I encounter online have this sort of flawed idea of self-love. And we talked about this in day two a little bit, that it just sort of happens, that it's something we can flip a switch and then we're good. You know, if we do the right combination of things, if we do the right combination of like crystals, baths, full moon, uh, that suddenly we'll find ourselves in this place where we just love ourselves unconditionally and it's as easy as that. And I challenged you yesterday to begin to think of self-love as an ongoing process, to think of self-love as something a practice, so to speak, that you have to commit to. Because as human beings, we will all naturally fluctuate along the scale of self-love from sometimes self-hatred and self-dislike to self-like and self-love and everything in between. And that fluctuation, those experiences are a natural part of our human learning and our human evolution. Yes, our goal is to get to a place where we are not affected by our external circumstances and where we, where we love ourselves regardless. But that is something that takes practice and it takes commitment and it takes a process to begin to understand how to bring that level of unconditional self-love into our lives. And one of the first things that I ask people to do as we begin to explore their self-love patterns, to understand where they are in the process right now so that they can intentionally move up that scale of self-love, one of the really important things to do is understand that for many of us, what we know about self-love how we feel about self-love, what we practice when it comes to self-love or just self-regard in general is something that in part we learn. We learn from our childhood experiences. So I want you to take a moment with me. And before we go any further, before we talk any more about where this happens, I want you to think about your primary caretakers, whoever took care of you the most when you were growing up. It could be your parents, perhaps it was a nanny, a grandparent, an aunt, um, foster parents, whoever spent the most time in your childhood caring for you, meeting your basic daily needs and interacting with you as a kid. And I want you to ask yourself, and this question is going to be a little bit strange. You might be thinking, what does this even have to do with my self-love? And I'm going to tell you, but I want you to ask yourself, what does that person or those people that cared for me as a child, that I interacted with the most, that I was around the most when I was growing up. What did they believe about self-love? How did they regard themselves? And the answer to that question is deeply important. And the next question, so there's two questions, is, you know, what did they believe? How did they regard themselves? And the next question is, how did you know that? Because most likely, most likely, the people that raised you, the people that took care of you as a child did not sit you down and regularly, regularly discuss with you how they felt about self-love or how they regarded themselves or how they were taking care of themselves or what they believed about the topic of self-love. Uh, that did not happen for me as a child. Uh, and I have not met many people who had an experience where that conversation was something that happened, where there was a conscious, tangible talk about the topic of self-love. And that tells me one thing is that if you were able to answer the first question, if you have an idea, a feeling, a sense, even of what your primary caretakers when you were growing up thought about themselves, what they believed about self-love, the second question is even more important because if they didn't sit you down and talk to you about it, then you learned that from somewhere. You deduced or drew that conclusion from your experience somehow. You observe their behavior, their actions. You listen to them talk even when they weren't talking directly to you. 
And all of those mechanisms of gathering information when we're children are how we learn to show up in the world. Uh, according to modern psychology, we believe that our developmental learning, our basic developmental learning occurs primarily at the age of six and earlier. And so I often challenge my clients to begin to think about what were my experiences? What did I observe? What information did I gather from my home, from my household, from my primary caretakers that taught me about how to regard myself, how to take care of myself, how to love myself. And the reason that that's important is because those things probably didn't happen on a conscious level. Those things that you learned probably didn't occur via a sit down, you know, face to face formal conversation. It was probably information that you picked up and gathered along the way that you observed and experienced along the way. There were probably conclusions that you drew all by yourself as a child. And many of us have never taken the time to evolve past what we have learned as a child, what we deduced and concluded as a little kid. And so many of us are running our self-love practices. We're running the way that we think about self-love, the way that we regard ourselves in our day-to-day um, you know, activities based on the thoughts and opinions and conclusions of a six-year-old. And I don't know about you, but I like to think that I am a different person now than when I was six. And so the question to you is, what was missing? What was missing from what you learned as a child to what you need now in your current experience? And what beliefs or conclusions might you be living to that are no longer accurate for you? What needs changing and adjusting? You know, what models did you have as a kid that maybe you picked up things, you know, learnings and information from, but maybe they aren't all that accurate. Maybe they're not great models. You know, that's true for a lot of us. God bless our parents, but sometimes they weren't the best models for self-love and that's okay. They were doing the best that they could at the time that they, you know, with the time and resources that they had. But that doesn't mean that we have to take those learnings and those conclusions and carry them into our adulthood. It doesn't mean we have to keep living to them. We're allowed to reevaluate and change and adjust what we have learned as a child and change it to something that works for us now because we're all constantly growing and evolving and learning. And if we don't learn to respond to that and we keep just running the same scripts and the same limitations and the same beliefs that we picked up unconsciously as children, you will never, ever, ever truly experience self-love for your authentic self, you know, as, a, as an autonomous individual. You won't experience it for you. You'll still be running um, the ideas and behaviors of, of other people. And so what I want to challenge you to do today on day three is we're going to do a really uh, brief meditation to help connect you with your inner child and discover some of those beliefs and limitations and observations that you may have picked up. And we're going to ask your inner self what you need the most right now. What do you need more of? How do you need to change and adjust this? And it's going to be really important because this meditation and this, you know, conversation that we're having today, unlike the first two days, which is a little more literal, this is a little more uh, subconsciously based. We're really going to kind of delve under the surface here and we're going to explore some things that are not perhaps in the conscious forefront of your mind. So it becomes really important for you to translate the information that we gather from your subconscious mind into a conscious applicable uh, format. And so I'm going to ask you to do some journaling at the end of this video. So I encouraged it in the other two videos and this video is, um, this particular video, I am requiring it. So I'm going to give you specific questions that I would love for you to journal around once you're finished this brief meditation. And what those questions are going to do is they're going to help you really start to solidify um, the subconscious information that we find into your tangible conscious mind so that you can then make adult decisions about what does this look like for me moving forward? How can I adjust my beliefs about, around self-love and self-care and self-regard 
to serve me now, to serve my best and highest good now, not when I was six, not based on what my parents did or didn't do or my caretakers did or didn't do. Um, I recommend that you have a pen and paper, a notebook, a journal, uh, something with you right now while we do the meditation. Because what I find is sometimes people will have experiences or they'll get information or have thoughts that are so important and so cathartic that it's really important that they just have the freedom to jot it down when it happens. And so I want to offer you the opportunity if you don't have something to write with, with you, now is a great time to grab that before we go into doing the actual meditation. And the meditation, once we do it, um, you'll have an opportunity after the video, I will put, I'll speak the questions to you, but also put them into the comment, the description of this video so that you can access them uh, whenever you need to. And what I want you to pay attention to is not only the information that you re directly receive from your inner self, your inner child, uh, but I want you to pay attention to any feelings, emotions, any specific thoughts or memories that pop up for you because those are really important. Whenever we access our subconscious minds and we begin to gather information, uh, even if it seems unrelated, our subconscious mind is really, really good at sort of offering up whatever we need to know, whatever we need to address or deal with. And our conscious minds won't always in the moment be able to make sense of like, well, why is this coming up? You know, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, I don't think this is related. Don't do that yet. You know, save that kind of like parsing out and judging and figuring out what's important and what isn't for after the meditation. While it's happening, I want you to pay attention to everything, whether it's happening in your mind or even if it's happening in your body. So it's really, really important that you sort of Commit to not judging until it's over uh, sort of thing. Please know that in the meditation, I'm going to use visual language uh, because that language is the most comfortable for me. I understand and I know that most or not everyone uh, sees visual imagery when they close their eyes and they meditate. And I want you to know that that's entirely okay. Uh, feel free to sense or feel or guess even at the answers to the questions or the answers to the prompt, the meditative prompts that I'm going to give you. Um, I can go into a whole other video about why guessing um, works as a, sub a subconscious mechanism that is uh, been scientifically, neurologically, and psychologically proven, um, but I won't in this video. Just suffice to say that it does work. And you can just guess. So if you don't know the answer to something, I want you to just guess. You know, go with your gut uh, here in this actual practice. Um, make sure that you are in a comfortable seated position, uh, somewhere where you're not likely to be, be disturbed. And what we're going to do together is I want you to begin by just taking a few deep breaths in through your nose, sending the breath down into your belly, and then exhaling through the mouth, dropping your shoulders, releasing any tension in your neck, your jaw, anywhere in your body you've been holding it. Continuing to breathe deeply and comfortably in through the nose, sending the breath down to the belly, and then exhaling throughout the mouth. Following your body's own cues for pacing, breathing in a way that is comfortable for you, holding your hands in a way that is comfortable for you. If it's easier, you can lie down. I really just want you to focus at this moment on breathing deeply, releasing tension from the body with each breath. For some of us this week, it might be the first time that you've really taken a deep breath, that you've really slowed and paid attention to what is going on internally in your body. And as you continue to breathe, I want you to imagine for a moment or sense or feel a sacred space created just for your healing. This sacred space can look like anything you'd like it to look like. It could be somewhere you've been before. It could be somewhere you haven't been before. It could be some place that exists on the planet and it may be some place that doesn't exist on the planet. No matter what you're imagining, whatever comes to mind, it is completely appropriate. 
The important part is that you understand that this sacred space that we're imagining is completely safe for you. You are loved and you are supported here unconditionally. You also have complete control over everything that happens here. No one comes in that you don't bring in and no one leaves that you don't send away. This space is protected. Some of you may be feeling anxiety or a little bit of nervousness about accessing anything from your childhood. Not all of us had idyllic childhoods, but please know that this space is safe and there are boundaries in place that cannot be breached. And as you continue to sense that sacred space, I want you to imagine your current self, just as you are right now, sitting or lying in that space. It should feel comfortable. It should feel familiar, even if you've never been there before. And as you imagine yourself there, you sense yourself there, I want you to get really, really comfortable in that environment. I want you to feel the ground beneath you. I want you to feel the air around you, feel the temperature, hear the sounds. Be as present as you possibly can in this space. And when you're ready and you feel fully present in the space that you've created, I want you to ask your inner child to join you. And your inner child can look or appear as anything that shows up. It could be you at any age in your childhood. We'll trust that whatever age shows up is the one that was meant to show up. And as your inner child joins you in this space, I want you to pay attention to how he or she looks. What are they wearing? What are they doing? How does their hair look? Are they wearing shoes? And these questions may seem trivial, but they're so important for separating your inner child from your current self. I want you to see them outside of you, even though they're a deep inherent part of you. And then I want you to ask your inner child if it's okay if you talk to them. Imagine them sitting down with you, equally as comfortable, already knowing who you are. But I want you to tell them, just in case, that you are them from the future. And that you want to talk to them to help both of you with something that's really important. And then we're going to take a few moments and we're just going to ask our inner child some questions about self-love. And when they answer you, I want you to be open to receiving the answer in any way that it may come forward. Be open to receiving the information however they want to give it to you. So they may show you something, a picture or an object or a memory. Uh, they may talk to you, you may hear the response or receive it in words in your thoughts. They may do something or send you something intangible like energy, a color, a light, or a feeling. However the answers come to you is completely appropriate. You don't have to figure them out right now or even know what they mean. Your job is only to receive them. 
And so now sitting with your inner child, I want you to take a moment and I want you to ask your inner child if they love themselves. Continuing to breathe as you receive that answer. Now ask your inner child what they learned about loving themselves. Trusting that whatever answer they give you is the answer that you need the most right now. Ask your inner child now what you need to learn about self-love. What truth would they like to give you in this moment about self-love? Perhaps they know something that you don't, or they remember something that you've forgotten. There is deep wisdom found in the hearts and minds of our inner children. Once you've received that answer, ask your inner child now, what do you need the most? What do the two of you need the most? To learn to love yourselves better. What do you and your inner child need the most? To learn to love yourselves better. in whatever form it chooses to come to you. Knowing that even if it doesn't seem to make sense right now, that's okay. It doesn't have to yet. There is value in gathering the information. And the very last question I want you to ask your inner child is what does he or she need from you? What do they want most in the world as you navigate this life together? What does he or she need to hear or experience? receive from you. Maybe it's something your inner child needs you to do more of or less of in your actual life. Be open to whatever answer may come without judgment, without reactivity, just understanding that you're gathering information from a deep part of yourself. As you receive that answer, whatever it may be, I want you to take a moment and just thank your inner child. Send him or her deep gratitude for being a part of you and for navigating life with you and for experiencing and going through anything that he or she may have gone through as a child. If you feel led, you can give your inner child a hug. And then 
give that inner child permission to leave this space, to go back from wherever he or she came from. Knowing that wherever they return to is exactly where they're meant to be. And as your inner child leaves, you can also imagine leaving the space coming back down to your physical body, back down to this current environment, to begin to have awareness for your physical surroundings. Perhaps move your shoulders or fingers. Very gently come back into your full experience of your current surrounding. Taking a few deep breaths Again, in through the nose, sending the breath deep into the belly and exhaling through the mouth. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, sit up or change position as you feel necessary. And this is the time now, while it's still fresh in your mind, to just take out your journal and I want you to explore the following questions in whatever method or way seems correct and aligned for you. Uh, you may want to begin by just jotting down some of the answers or information that you received, whatever stood out to you, anything that kind of lingered with you, uh, just so you remember them. The first question is, what have I learned as a child about self-regard or self-love that may not be accurate? What examples or lessons do I need to release or let go of or maybe need to be reconsidered? The second question I'd like you to explore is What about my childhood self, my inner child? What traits or characteristics or beliefs would help me or serve me or help me love myself better? What do I need more of from my inner child and his or her experience? And the last and final question I would like you to explore after this meditation is what parts of the information I received today can I integrate into my own self-love journey to help me learn to love myself more and better? Again, these questions, I will write them in the description of the video. So if you are rushing to write them down, you don't have to. Um, if you miss them, that's okay. They are below the video in the description uh, for you. And remember that this information gathering process is for your benefit. There's no judgment here. There is nothing right or wrong about your experience in self-love wherever you are. And this journey is all about acceptance and grace and kindness. But having an understanding of our childhood experience and what we learned and observed and experience, experienced as far as self-regard is deeply important to how we express self-love currently in our adult lives. And once we have a conscious understanding of what we may have picked up, we can begin to reevaluate maybe the things that aren't serving us or aren't working for us anymore. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm so happy that you joined me and I cannot wait to see you in day four of our Loving Your Authentic Self uh, immersion.